Grooms for Animator Reviews. I'm Ryan, and this is The Groom, and we watched The Cabin in the Woods because we're getting a little cabin fevery. And Should we watch Cabin Fever for that? I mean, we could. No. We should. No. I like Cabin Fever. So anyways, we found this, I think, on Amazon Prime streaming, not the ones you have to pay for, but you kind of pay for it anyways if you have Prime. Prime. So... The movie starts out with five college kids who are going to Kurt's cousin's place. He's like the the tall kind of it's Chris athletic Hemsworth. man. He's, He's Chris Thor. Hemsworth. Yeah. So they're going to his cousin's cabin for a little break from school. And uh, it's there's definitely something nefarious going on, we find out. There's a whole corporation that's completely off. The grid of anyone's knowledge is on a need-to-know basis. Illuminati. Uh, no. So they're trying to figure out how they can kind of orchestrate everything to come to the end game of... Uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice. It's sacrifice of these children, essentially, to please these elder gods. And they have different places like this set up in all different countries in the world. And they have them all on these TVs, and they get to watch all their progress and everything. And uh, it's, it seems like this has been going on for quite a long time, as they are Elder Gods. We want to appease them as to not have them come up and ravage the Earth. So, they have things set up in the house, like pheromones. They have things that will give suggestion to how people should act, perhaps like stereotypes. Because... Definitely in the beginning of the movie, you don't get the feeling that Kurt's character is this meathead jock. They're all very educated kids. They're all going pre-med and sociology. Kurt's a sociology yeah. major with a full academic scholarship. Yeah. So they're they're all smart. They're not this they're stereotypical the the whore and the jock and the mm -hmm. fool and the virgin because she's in spoiler alert, she's not a virgin, but those are the parts they need to play. So, um, they have the power of suggestion, they have all these weird chemical things going on, and then a trapdoor opens up to lead them down to the basement, where they find all these different things, and of course, one of them finds a book, and what do you do in a book when you're in a cabin and you're an idiot, is read it, and then you read the Latin, which you, you don't do. Don't do that. Read the Latin. Have you never seen Evil Dead? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> so, of course that happens. And um, they released this family of inbred zombie the killers, the Buckners. And they have to try to figure out something. They don't know what's going on. Marty, the stoner, the fool, is kind of like they're, they're puppeteers. They're puppeteering us. Someone who's talking is just freaking out. Smoking a lot of pot. We're going to end it off here as it is spoiler free. But like, have you not seen this movie? Like, what what are you doing? You should movie watch this movie. Two thousand eleven. Did it? I have no idea. I don't know either. I love this movie. This is it's like good movie. probably the thirtieth time I've seen this movie, and there's a particular part at the end that I just loved so much. It's such a good time. <laughs> what did you like about this movie? Um, I loved the coalition between all the stuff in the basement. And how it, like, a lot of it... Correlation? Correlation, thank you. How a lot of it correlated to other horror movies, mm -hmm. to other very popular, common folklore and superstitions. And, you know, and then you get to see some of this stuff later in the movie. And it's just, it's really cool. I really love the detail they put into that basement scene where they... They focused in on a bunch of different stuff before Dana picks up the diary. Mm -hmm. And they focused in on, but, and like, you know, like the one part where he, like, you see them almost activate like five different things before they actually mm -hmm. do the diary. So I really Something like that part. That reminds you of the lament configuration. Mm -hmm. And he's like turning it, and you're just like, oh, like oh. just put it down. Just put it. We've seen movies where this goes terribly wrong. Just put it down. Yeah, and you gotta wonder: Has nobody in that cabin ever watched a horror movie this ever? Is, this is a question I have a lot because in some movies they're so self-aware and they're like, "Oh, that's a zombie." But in other movies, it's like they've never even 
heard of the concept of a zombie or like seen a ghost or like heard of a werewolf or anything like there's no folklore at all that exists in that universe and well, it's in so the crazy one scene, he does he does acknowledge that that's a werewolf because he remember he's seen he actually acknowledges that the one thing is a yeah, werewolf so yeah but i mean like it does sure. evil dead not <laughs> exist, in, exist this universe? in this universe because that is a that is a shame <laughs> it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. All right, what did you like about it? I like that this is not a predictable movie, but it is a predictable movie. There's a lot of things that it follows with, like cookie cutter movie. But then they throw so many just wild things at you that you're like, I didn't think that was going to happen. Okay. Or you forget about something that exists in this movie. And then there's a huge scene and then you're like, oh no. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. And it, it's great because it just, like, You're that, like, that oh, callback to yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the fact that, like, you know how, like, a zombie family would be. But then they throw all this other stuff at you. And then it's like the zombie family maybe isn't the worst part of things that are going on. I love that. Um, I love the gore in this. I love that the it's one, really good. what was it, the dad that was using the bear trap and he was just throwing it at people. Oh, that was And amazing. it would ka-ching in them and then he'd drag them back and it, it was would, like. Ugh. It would what in them? Ka-ching. <laughs> ka-ching. Shut up. <laughs> it ka-chinged in them and it hurt and they mm -hmm. were screaming. And I, I liked that. I liked that um, the, the shots in the dark were easier to see. But only when they wanted you to. Like, there's mm -hmm. a shot where Marty's standing outside. And I think there's at least two of the family members walking around back there. But you only glimpse a bit of them when they want you to see it. And mm -hmm. I thought that was really well done. That it wasn't just, like, <coughs> coughing. It wasn't just other people could see, you know, the, the movement and infer it. It was, like, it was a very, you know. Subtle. It was subtle, but it was very deliberate when they wanted you to see it. Mm -hmm. Lots of hand movements in this review. Got the chopsticks. Yeah. So, what did you just like about this movie? Um. Uh, I mean, I really like. I really like this movie. I really do. There's. It, it's hard for me to find stuff that I didn't like about it, but I honestly, uh, I just. I kind of hated the ending, to be completely honest. The ending was obvious. It was a whole... They took a great movie that was like this whole like big, like, we're going to keep doing stuff. We're going to lead you one way, and then zap, lead you one way, and zap. Mm -hmm. And then they just coasted to the end. And I was just like, oh. I wanted to see some... The ending... Leaves a little bit to be desired. If you were going to end it like that, you needed to be more... You needed to show more than just a hand. And you'll understand that when you when you watch the end of the movie. If you're going to end it the way you end it, show more than the hand. I also like bonus like that one zombie hand that was just doodling <laughs> around. <laughs> just living its best life. Because if you, if That's depending, how we got thing. <laughs> depending on the zombie, if you cut off parts of it, they're just going to keep going. Hands flapping oh. around. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Um... What did you not like? What did I not like? Um, I I didn't like... I know... Maybe it's not how he's written. There were certain parts where, with Marty, I was just like, could you please just not be in this movie anymore? <laughs> I don't know if it was the voice or what. I think it was his voice. I was just like, oh, could you not? Like, Bonus hate. His stop, voice was kind of annoying. Stop giving him so many lines. I don't think that's his nat natural voice. And Either. if it is, I apologize, but, like, I could not. If if it is, your voice is annoying. Stop it. It's so rude. It's true, though. Like, I have an annoying voice, but I'm also very self-aware of it, so. No, you don't. Shut up. <laughs> um, all right, so what. I thought the, ooh, the pacing. The pacing was actually pretty good. I thought the, I thought yeah. the, I thought the movie went very and well. it's. it's only like an hour an thirty. Hour, yeah, it's an hour and a half, and I don't think I got up once. Yeah, it was really, it really, even if you, even if it's not the first time you watched, it's a movie you can rewatch. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because you find little things. And it's one of those movies that if people aren't, like, 100% ready to dive into, like, really serious, gruesome horror, like, it's a good segue into it. Because Thor's there. I mean, there's a lot of gore in this, though. Yeah. I loved it. I know. That one part, I'm like, they, there's no way they'd be able to run through there. They'd just be falling and sliding. <laughs> like, how are they running through there? They're not. Oh, shut up, it's a movie. It makes me think of that one part in Dead Alive, after he lawnmowers all those zombies, and he's trying to run, and he's just running in, in one place. spot, and he, you can hear his shoes sliding, and all the zombies <laughs> are getting closer, and he's just, little legs are going faster. <sighs> we should review that. I love that movie, oh, too. All right, so what would you rate this? I would rate this probably like a four out of five. I love this movie so much. I will continue to watch this movie so many more times. It's always just, even though I know exactly what's going to happen scene for scene, I still really, really, really enjoy it. I just wish Cthulhu would have been in it because of mm. all the mention of Elder Gods. Gotta love Cthulhu. Hello, Cthulhu. <laughs> um, I would give it a four point five out of five. I think it's a really right. good. It's a really great movie. I think everything's done well. I think it's just it's the last five. Mi- I wish they would just redo the last five minutes of this movie. I would be so. I would make it would be the perfect movie for me. I would give it a five out of five because there's there's great there's little bits of comedy in it. There's good drama in it. There's a ton of gore in it. And a lot of it, it it looked. I didn't see anything that looked CGI. Most of it. Oh no, there's a, there's a lot of CGI, but the the creature design is is so on point. It's so good. It's just uh-huh. it's just I it's it's a really good movie. And like she said, it's a movie you can watch over and over again. I've watched this movie probably about half as much as she has, and I constantly see new things in the background of this movie that I didn't catch before. And I think that's a mark of a good rewatchable movie is that you learn something new or see something new every time you re you rewatch it. And I think that's what gives this movie such great value. It's probably the smartest thing I've ever said on this channel. Wow, I'm so proud. So, yep. So yeah, have you watched this movie? Let us know your thoughts down below. We'd love to know them. Leave us a comment. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. If you think that we should review Dead Alive, please give it a like. It's probably going to happen anyways, my love, because <sighs> that movie yeah. is so good. And I have the... I, th- I think that's what I got at the convention was the... There's another country's version, like their oh, yeah. edition that I got. That we need to watch because I need to let John know if it's different than the American release. So yeah. We're going to watch it. Yeah. But like the video anyways. If you like the level of enthusiasm in my husband. Yeah. <laughs> hit the... Stop it. <laughs> hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. Um, did I say subscribe? Yeah. No. They need to subscribe. <laughs> if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. You can also find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. You can find my solo reviews as well as reviews with the groom on iTunes in podcast form. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter under Repeat Groom Ray. You can also find me on Twitch. Subscribe, like, and follow my videos on Twitch. At Repeat Ray Animator, where me and my friends play video games, mostly first person shooters, and talk about really dumb stuff, and it's kind of entertaining. And I have cameos in it sometimes, and yelling she has in the cameos in it, yelling at me in them a lot. Like, shut up, I'm trying to sleep. Go to bed. A bitch is tired. Yeah. So, always fun. <laughs> what have you guys been doing to combat your cabin fever? Let us know. And I hope you're all doing well. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.